I want to thank everybody for being here this evening because this is a very, very serious, serious meeting that we're having. As your city councilor, I have been working with the city of Northampton with Wayne Fiden from the Planning and Sustainability Department. And also, I had received a call from um, Just Help, Healthy, yeah, Just Healthy, and asking if they could meet with me. I never heard of them. I didn't know what was up. Nobody would tell me. So I did meet with them. And then when I was told what they wanted to do, I go, what? Okay, that's cool. I sat down with them and they said, well, we heard about you, counselor. We heard that you care about your residents. And I do care about my residents. I told them, and also working with Wayne, the only way I operate is by having a public forum. I figure every resident here in the city of Northampton and Ward 6 deserve the opportunity to ask, what are you going to do? I told them as a city council with all the development and especially with the older problems that we've had at the landfill, we would not tolerate older problems again, again. I mean, the Audrey's is here from Water Not Waste. We just will not fool around with any kind of nuisance of odor at all because they will come forth again. They understood. They want to work very closely with me as a city councilor in the city of North Danton and with the mayor in general. And I'm very pleased to say that they have been listening to what I've been saying to them. No odors. I will not tolerate anybody abutting the landfill or living in Ward 6 and Ward 7 to have to deal with a nuisance of odor. Safety. I told them that safety is a big concern of mine for all my residents and every child that has to walk to school. And I want to make sure that every family is protected. And they will talk about what I have mentioned to them. Lighting. That is another concern I have with what is going to apparently happen at the Willard's gravel pit. Am I happy about what's happening here? I'm happy about me going and saying to them what I want and what my residents want. That's the value here tonight. And I think your voices are here. You need to outright come out and say what your questions are and I expect you to get the answers. Get the answers. That's what they're here for tonight, to answer. I have spent some time, so has it Wayne Biden, and thank you for spending all the time and having respect for Ward 6, all the residents in the city also, and also your company. I appreciate your dedicated time, and I told you this would not be a small meeting. I know my residents. <laughs> I know what they care about. Okay. Another thing I asked them, what are you going to do for Ward 6 and for the city of Northampton? What kind of money are you going to bring in for our city? We need money, just like other cities. They want to work very carefully with Ward 6. They want to be part of the community. And they don't want to have truck traffic. We don't want to go through that again. We've had that problem again with Willard's gravel pit, which I told them. Many of butters have great concerns of the amount of noise and also it being used as recreational. No all-terrain vehicles, I don't want it. We don't want it anymore. We want a good quality of life for everybody in their backyards. That's what we're asking for, good quality of life respect for every resident in Ward 6, in Ward 7, and in the city of Northampton. Be part of us, work with us. That's the value here. And I told you how important it is to me as a counselor that you listen. Give them the time to ask the questions. I don't want them to be rushed. And I know you will allow them. <coughs> and I respect you for that. Also, I want to say Neil. Neil, I have worked very closely with. How he tolerated me, I don't know, but <laughs> he did. But anyways, he went out, he had those large signs made up, 
and place them in these city conservation areas to keep that communication going to whoever we could reach out to. Also, I think Wayne's 350 letters were sent to abutters and we expanded that. We didn't have to, they did. They expanded it for us to reach out because of the time involvement here. So I want to let you know that, please, listen very carefully tonight, give you, and you tell them you, what your concerns are, what are they going to do about your concerns? What about the odors? What about the lighting in that area of Willard's gravel pit? Also, the safety, big time truck traffic, noise, okay? We want to be able to have a good quality of life. We don't want to go through what we went through before. So, I am opening it up to Wayne Biden. He is the Director of Planning and Sustainability. Thank you, Ron. Thank you all for coming. For people who come late, there are a few chairs here. There's some chairs over here. So sort of move around where there is some space, not a lot. Um, and there are bathrooms for those of you who don't know the building. Go through this door and turn left if you're looking for So um, I'm just going to talk briefly about the process tonight um, and then sort of do introductions. But so we're, we're in essence talking about two things, or three things tonight that people are probably interested in. The first is generally, you know, the, the Bill Willard's Inc. gravel pit is on the market, and so we're going to talk about sort of what are, what are the different parties that are looking at it. Um, about half of it for development, you're, you're here from Just Healthy, talking about that. About half of it for conservation area, which I'll talk about in a little while, and we have a little map and stuff. Um, basically, the old gravel pit, the old disturbed area, is planned to be redeveloped. The, pristine areas, if you will, the woods, even though clearly there are, you know, there's some disturbance, but the wooded area is our hope is to preserve that forever as open space in the process. So we're going to talk about that in a little while. Um, obviously, I suspect a lot of you are here because it's not just a development process project, it's also about marijuana, uh, and so I know that gets a lot of discussions going. Um, and it, so I, I'm wearing a couple of hats tonight before you. One is going to talk about the open space. Part of my job for the city is to work with city council, work with the Conservation Commission to buy open space, so I'll talk about that. The other is that my office staffs the regulatory process, the approvals that they need for, for the marijuana to go forward, and so I'm sure you're going to have questions about that. Um, you all know that there was a, a statewide referendum, and that referendum passed overwhelmingly in Massachusetts, um, legalizing marijuana. Um, with lots of conditions. So some of you may have philosophical issues with marijuana, maybe just concerned about it, concerned about the fact that it's still not legal under federal law. None of those things are really issues for the city. Ultimately, that was decided by higher up people, you know, higher pay grade than me. You all, when you voted, said you want to allow this. We take our lead from the referendum. So. Statewide, marijuana was legalized, again, with lots of conditions. In Northampton, it passed overwhelmingly. So that's sort of our charge. So whatever the federal government does, that's not our issue. Um, our issue is making sure that people comply with local laws, state laws, et cetera. So I'll talk about later tonight, what's the approval process that's out here. Um, we obviously worry about two different scales in terms of any project that goes forward. Like, what are the effects citywide and wardwide, and those are important. And then a, a place particularly near and dear to us in the regulatory process is people who live nearby. People who would smell odors if there were odors. People who would be affected by traffic and those traffic. People who would see things if it you know, was ugly. So all those things we're going to talk about, and, and particularly the questions we're looking for are anything we can help you understand how the process is going forward. Um, so let me start by letting healthy, uh, uh, no, same thing. <laughs> just healthy introduce themselves, and I'm going to come back and talk about the other things. Great, thank you. I'm Bill Fallon, and this is Neil Fallon. Thanks guys for coming. Really appreciate everyone's, I know everyone has a very, very busy schedule, so thank you very much for joining us this evening. Okay, <coughs> now we'll try to make the slides work. Okay, so. You're very fuzzy. Let me 
So I think tilting the screen just that last minute. Um, is this easier? Is that easier? Yes. Good idea. Okay. You could break he'll they'll go off. Yes. Is that for is that, is that more better with this? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, what we'd like to cover tonight, uh, what we've got on our agenda is to introduce who we are. Uh, we'd like to go through our mission statement, uh, a little bit of an overview of the project introduction that we've been working on over the uh, over the last year with Councilor Labarge and uh, and uh, Wayne Fiden. Uh, then we'd like to dive straight into what you should expect uh, in this uh, uh, in this kind of a development. How does it impact the community uh, and do the, and and in terms of what you would see every day, we'll move into a little bit of the operations. Uh, we'd like to spend quite a bit of time on the subjects of security, traffic, and then ultimately also get into what employment opportunities will there be uh, associated with this uh, facility, and then ultimately how will this impact the value of my overall property, right? Which is certainly something that's uh, important to all of us uh, as well. And then we'll open it up to more questions and answers uh, uh, opportunities. But what I'd like to suggest is that for every single slide, we're going to stop and we're going to field questions. Okay, because it's easier going through rather than trying to think of them later. We'll do more later, but we'll start uh, right out of the box. So um, uh, I mentioned uh, Neil Fallon, uh, myself, Bill Fallon is here. Uh, Clark uh, Petrick is here, and Clark is up in the back. Clark is our director of security, and uh, Brett Sproul. Uh, Brett, if you can raise your hand. Uh, Brett is our uh, director of uh, cultivation, and Brett uh, learned his trade by uh, working uh, initially with a with his brother to build a greenhouse in uh, in Denver, Colorado, and it was the first greenhouse in the state. Uh, to uh, to do so, and then when he moved uh, back to the East Coast, where he's from, we were fortunate enough to get to know Brett over the last uh, over the last year. So uh, Brett would be living here uh, as well as ultimately us uh, living here as well. Uh, key partners that are with us tonight, uh, we have uh, Ed Etheridge. Many of you might know Ed. Ed, if you can put up your hand. There we go. Okay, Ed. Uh, Ed is uh, with uh, the law firm of Etheridge and Stoyer. Ed has been practicing uh, zoning uh, law since uh, the 1970s here in Northampton. Um, and we also have Jeff Squire from Berkshire Design Group, uh, also in Northampton. Uh, and uh, Jeff has been working with us over for the last year. And also tonight, we, we want, want to make sure we recognize uh, Mayor David Narkowitz, who is here as well attending. And uh, he's uh, here. He's here to observe. Okay. Uh, for us, we were. We were. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about who Just Healthy is. Uh, we were formed by a uh, an experienced team of professionals. We have a deep understanding of the medicinal benefits of of cannabis. Uh, it's been life changing for many people, including members of our team whose parents have had uh, health problems. And certainly, I think within, particularly in this region, you all know quite a bit about uh, the health benefits uh, of cannabis. I'm sure it's, it's been talked about quite a bit over the last couple of years. And if anything, we're here as kind of a byproduct of the way you folks have shown leadership uh, in the state um, as well as uh, as well as locally. Um, we draw on our experience here in Massachusetts as well as in Colorado. And uh, uh, in terms of what's the right thing to, uh, to do to, uh, to help this community be a leader in the space um, uh, within the state of Massachusetts, which I think there's quite a bit of an opportunity to do so, and also lead the space in terms of environmental consciousness, which is a, uh, right now, it's, it's a really important point to the state of Massachusetts. It's been important to us since day one, when we first entered into this. Um, what we're proposing is a, a state-of-the-art greenhouse in Northampton uh, on the, uh, the former uh, Bill Willard uh, property. Um, and uh, greenhouses uh, make very, very good neighbors. That's an important point, right? They're very quiet. Uh, you don't hear them. They, uh, they don't drive trucks, right? They don't kick up dirt every day. Every day. They just are really quiet. Uh, and uh, we'll get into that more uh, along the way. Uh, our goal with this, and really the goal of uh, your your city, is that this serves as a beacon 
in the state of Massachusetts for responsible uh, energy uh, consumption. And um, uh, I think that uh, everything we're doing here puts Northampton literally in the leadership spot today for any location north of really Florida that we know of. Uh, uh, yes, sir. My name is Bob Kolonowski. I have to do this sort of out of turn because I have to leave. But uh, in lieu of taxes, since they're not profit, they probably will have a tax exemption. What are you prepared to do for the city? We are a taxable organization. We are not a tax-exempt organization because during the during the year, the law changed for the uh, Massachusetts Department of Health. Yes. So Massachusetts originally required these businesses to be set up as a non-for-profit. However, we were one of the first people to switch to a for-profit for that purpose. Okay. Do the filings still say non Yes, the, uh, the filings have not caught up, or I mean the public documents haven't caught up with the changes that we made uh, uh, within. But to address your question up front, we will have a, uh, we have a host agreement with the, uh, with the city of Northampton uh, uh, as a starting point. That certainly imposes, uh, it imposes uh, a local tax uh, directly against the, uh, the sale of, of uh, cannabis within this, uh, within this community. And we're also going to be a proud real estate taxpayer. But unfortunately, um, the Cannabis Control Commission is just overwhelmed and does not have enough time to continually update the documents. So, you know, on just on a continual basis, we're always calling them to, to kind of get us up to par. Yes, ma'am. This is a done deal? It's already, the, the land has already been purchased? No. No, no we, are, we are in the process of, of um, going through the process of uh, exploring any property or any problems within the land. Uh, we're going through estimates of what it's going to cost to grade the property, et cetera. Uh, we have a purchase and sale agreement on the property subject to our due diligence. Uh, so we're, we're quite far along, but at the same time, there's quite a bit of work to be done as we, uh, as we work through this. So we have not been, we have not completed yet. Because we are natural butter, and we haven't heard anything until we got the thing from Marianne. Yes. That's right. So we're here to explore and to listen uh, as part of our process of due diligence for going through this entire, you know, going through this at the same time. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Um, this is a. There you go. Okay. Uh, this is a an aerial photo of um, the uh, the Willard Bill Willard property as it exists today. Just to, and, and I think you're all familiar with that. I'm not sure when's the last time you saw it from kind of an aerial view with the top down. Uh, with, the, with the entrance of certainly on Ryan Road and the actual gravel operations uh, that, uh, that we were, uh, were involved with. And we'll show you uh, a rendering, high level rendering of what this could look like in the future. At the end. Yes, yes. Neil, could you go back to that again? And explain about the conservation land that's up. There's water there. And yes. What we're looking at here. Yes, you're you're looking at the gravel operations right now, the core gravel operations, and you can see a series of ponds and and uh, and lakes and wetlands. Our intention when developing this property is that uh, we ultimately would uh, work with the city to deed this over to protect the fish and the wildlife that is uh, in these ponds. Uh, we know that these are great places to go fishing. And it's, uh, we've, we've heard that from a couple different folks. It's actually pretty important. So our goal is for all these wetlands to preserve them and to turn them over as part of the overall uh, green space uh, to, the, uh, to the city. And we've been working closely with Wayne Fiden uh, on, that, on that subject. Yes. I am a woman who walked from the river. Now, are you speaking of inside the property itself? The conservation portion, I'm assuming, is the public part. The, the public conservation part, I think that the answer would be absolutely yes. Yes, and access still needs to be worked out, but the answer would be absolutely yes. That is the purpose of, of making sure that's available, and particularly making sure if, uh, if fishing is an important uh, point, for example, is access to the waterway as well. 
can you, can you just roughly mark out on that space where the greenhouses are going to be? Um, we've got a slide for that as we go through. Yes, we'll, we'll get there. Yes. Are you purchasing the whole gravel pit? We are purchasing 50 acres of the uh, the gravel pit. The I'm sorry? What's happening to the rest of it? 50 acres is being currently looked at a, for a solar development project by developers that are not us, and the remaining 100 acres the city will be buying to add to the conservation land. Yes, it's all wetlands. Oh, excuse me. Oh, can I just ask a question about, so um, we're from the neighborhood that um, abuts the, the driveway, except not, not from Burt's Pit, but the one that goes along into the, kind of the heart of it. Yes. What's happening along there? Is that the lake is on one side of it, and then there's like a, a dirt road. And then you mean right, right here? No. To the okay. down yes. and to the right, to the bottom. It's to the right. Oh, to the right down here. Yeah, it's like down there. Is that um, anything? Uh, that one I think goes into the, uh, the proposed solar development in the future, so that would not be part of this uh, this property. Oops. Okay, so I, I think you're. I, I think uh, Councilor Labarge pointed out to us that you're all quite aware of the environmental issues uh, for the existing property. Uh, there's a consent decree that overhangs the property for violations of the Clean Water Act. Uh, as part of our uh, process of developing it, uh, our goal, not our only goal, we, we must remediate that uh, to make sure that uh, the wetlands are protected, that any, any stormwater runoff uh, does not go directly into the water supply uh, anymore, and that's an important aspect of this entire, uh, entire process that we are, we are going through. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes. But I was more concerned with what materials you might have in your operation that can become a contaminant. Yes. So in terms of contaminants, how? Getting into the aquifer? Yeah, I mean, that you, you have, you know, uh, chemical storage for your operation in a tank. The tank develops a rupture, it leaks into, and then it's in our groundwater. It wasn't there when you bought the property. Sure. But I'm concerned about so in terms of chemicals, the, the chemicals will be stored in a secure location. These, look, uh, these chemicals and nutrients aren't, nor do they have access to the outdoors as they will be in the facility. So any contaminants that were to spill within the facility would be cleaned up. And then on, we would have to uh, directly de uh, report that to the Department of Health as well as the Cannabis Control Commission in the event that chemicals uh, were released within our facility outside of the aquifer. I have a question, what about fertilizer, the kind of fertilizer that you use to actually grow your crops? And what is your question? What kind of chemical you use? So these are chemicals. Up, this is potassium okay. and phosphate, okay. primarily, and nitrogen. Okay. Oh, yes. I, excuse me. Thank you. So the primary, uh, primarily these plants um, are consuming nitrogen and phosphate um, in order to grow. And, and these are the same fertilizers that are currently used um, on lawns today. But these aren't, these aren't um, substance or uh, chemicals that you would not be uh, familiar with. Right, but that doesn't, so just because they're used on lawns today, that doesn't Yes, they're well. They're all stored internally in inside the facility, and as as Neil pointed out, uh, treat it like a controlled substance. You know, at the same time, because they're in in uh, insecure uh, vats, for example. And if anything were to leak out within the facility, we'd have to report it. So we're quite careful about uh, how that is done. In the done. process of reporting, once we were uh, once we do report an incident we then are subject to an inspection. So we would be opening the doors for the Department of Health and the Canvas Control Commission to ensure that A, the contaminant was dealt with properly and the measures that we did have in place um, for whatever reason were either remediated or we had to shut down production to uh, redesign the facility. I guess there's also um, how you find out more information on the product itself. Or, um, you 
That might be a that might be a Brett question. Yeah, the state's going to have a list of approved and banned pesticides that we use. So obviously, we're going to only use the approved pesticides with this and license. Uh, GMOs are not on our list of stuff that we will be using. We haven't picked out a new green line yet or designed the recipe yet. Um, but when we do, I, I can make that public knowledge. We're looking like and his email address is on the end of this slide. Yeah, we'll, so, yes. you know, all our contact information will be certainly available. <laughs> yes, let me so, start in the back. Is it, so I think it's not, a, it's not an organic farming that I mean, it's all using pesticides. I, you know, certainly, be, certainly not like pesticides. It would be roughly 95% organic. We'll probably use a PK booster at the end that's synthetic, uh, but we'll flush that out of the plants completely. It'll be approved PK booster. It just, Helps the flowers get a little bigger during the flower period. That's that's about it. Everything else that I've grown myself is uh, typically 100% organic. Yeah, so it's virtually all organic with some limitations. Well, I I I didn't mean it that way. Excuse me. I I meant just in terms of the materials that are going into it. Right. But it's not yes. Yes. I yes. You're. I. Sorry. You're right. Yes. Yes. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but we cannot hear a word back here that's being said. Okay, and well, I'm hoping that people will stand up louder. and speak loud and clear, because this is really very important for all of us to share this information. We will and speak louder. Including you okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes. If you need me to echo it, I will. <laughs> We've examined the property. Please stand up. It's really hard to hear. It's a huge room. What about any hazardous waste that may have been left by Willers over the past 60, 70 years? We have not. Uh, we have not found any evidence of hazardous materials left. There certainly have been some. Uh, Has anybody checked in? Yes. 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 Correct. Yes, there's a question. Yeah, no, it's um, if you are going to store chemicals and stuff, you said like if there's a spill that you would then go in and report it and everything. Can I ask that you use any kind of preventives that are available, like spill trays or whatever, or systems, so if, if something does happen, that it, it could be sustained? Certainly, and the and, um, Department of Health has also asked the exact same thing, so all of these are spit, um, contained <coughs> louder. And I will speak louder, excuse me. Question. Are you operating any other facilities right now? No. So this is your first endeavor? This will be our first endeavor here in the Commonwealth. And we have, in terms of, in terms of, it's an important question though, but because in terms of design, we're working with firms that have built some of the, uh, the finest <laughs> facilities in North America. Um, because greenhouse technology has evolved so far across North America, we in the United States are, are behind. Uh, the Netherlands led the charge uh, quite a few years ago, quite a long time ago actually, uh, uh, because they're the breadbasket of, of Europe. And we have spent quite a bit of time in, uh, in Canada, uh, in, areas, uh, in an area called Leamington, Ontario, which has 4,000 acres under glass. So we're working with folks uh, both here and uh, and uh, around North America that produce the leading uh, leading greenhouses, but also the leading technology that takes care of the point that was mentioned uh, because of, of, of the magnitude and the quality of the facilities. We don't want it to have, have the same <coughs> risk you're describing, right? So the uh, uh, it's not only a Department of Health issue, right? But we'll make a major investment in this uh, in this facility. And we don't want the same thing to happen that you're mentioning. Yeah. Yes. Can I ask again about odor? Because there's a lot of talking about odor. We'll address it directly. Could we? Um, I was wondering, is it, if, if something happened, could you give us an idea? Like, is it going to smell like the malls out in Hadley, like manure? No. So in terms of odor, I know that Let's is, first and foremost, we do have a full section. Could we address it at that section? Yeah, sure. Thank yeah. you. OK, so important question for all of you is what should you expect? Um, we've pointed out already, uh, the goal is for us to have a partnership with you both on transparency of what we're doing and safety. <laughs> Our Director of Security and Safety will, uh, will address it in a few uh, minutes. Uh, a permanent solution to the long-term problems of the, uh, the Willard uh, gravel pit. 
that I'm sure you all uh, would love to see uh, resolved on a permanent basis. Um, we want to make sure we eliminate loud, noisy, uh, dirty trucks kicking up dust and uh, and cl crowding the roads. Yes, ma'am. But there will be loud, noisy, heavy trucks when they're building. How long will it take to build this plant? The uh, the process of actually leveling the soil and crushing a lot of the uh, uh, concrete and debris piles on the property will likely take uh, somewhere between five and six weeks. Uh, as you see, they're massive, right? You know what this is, right? They've got to be they've got to be leveled. There'll be a period where all that all that material needs to get leveled on the property. Uh, a foundation needs to get poured, but fortunately, once once we get to that foundation level then it's like one big massive tinker toy operation if you will of putting a greenhouse together right so it's not there'll be a period of time where uh we will have construction right while we while we cure and close the gravel pit operations but it will be relatively short yes so ideally when is it uh you think or you would like to break ground We'd like to be bre breaking ground if all went uh, swimmingly well. We'd like to be breaking ground going into July, yes. uh, July, August kind of time frame. That would be ideal if we could do that. Okay. Yes. I am curious to know, I heard on the 1400 station that Holyoke, Massachusetts has open arms to factories such as what you were suggesting. They have cheaper electricity, they have lower rentals. Have you looked in that direction at all? Is that something that you so I think. Have Ninety percent of this industry, and unfortunately, old technology and ancillary practices have forced a lot of old buildings that weren't designed for the industrial use of such products. That's why we hear on the news of odor seeping out, because back in the 1930s, textile mills being designed weren't designed for an airtight biopharma type at atmosphere. So yes, we certainly did consider those options, but in order to do the right thing, I think erecting the correct technology and making sure that it's both environmentally friendly as well as friendly to our neighbors was really what we were thinking, and this was the only way to do it, to ensure that there won't be odors and a nuisance in the community. There's a question back there. Yes. Do we need to speak louder? Yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> they know I speak very loudly usually very positively. I was just wondering, wasn't it proposed that this was going to take place in Leeds? Yes. That might be a different group. That's a different one. Yeah, that was a completely so different this group. Type of project was looked at or proposed. That is out of my forecast, and I'm, I'm just not aware of it. You know, we strategically. Well, maybe somebody like Lane or somebody could address that later on if it's not perfect. Here we go. I can just very quickly. So they were looking at doing sort of a farming operation under some sort of very simple, you know, a, a seasonal farming operation and drawing, but not a full greenhouse process. No, they actually presented a community meeting in order to build five, four or five, 20 by 70 foot tall greenhouses to keep them down. That's not allowed on that land, and I'm sure you're more aware of than I am, because it's overlying the water and the friction. That's so correct. That's correct. The plans that present this community meeting, which you or no one from the city, by the way, attended, were to build greenhouse structures on the plane. Right. You're right. We weren't. How do we know why it hasn't happened? Yeah. So. We don't know that it hasn't happened. So they. Right. They, they didn't look at our regulations. They sort of did a neighbor meeting without consulting us, and it's a process, as you said, that's not allowed in that area there. Right. So they can come back as a but seasonal operation. Here. Well, they need to go through a permit process we'll talk about later. But. Excuse me. May I? Sorry. Sorry. No. I mean, I, I respect that you want to comment, but I would like to hear what you think. Yeah. Well, I think that the plans that they presented so, so there is a permit process we're going to talk about later tonight, what the process is going forward. So this is this is an approval process. It has not been approved yet. You got a question in here. Yes. yes. Um, on your previous slide that you just clicked away from, it said something about plants need darkness too. And now on this slide that you just clicked to, 
it says that there will be light decoration curtains. Correct. So which one is it? Are, the, are there going to be lights on at night, or are there not going to be lights on at night? Let's, okay, so we'll address each one, and the, to, to cut right to your question, total darkness at night for you as a neighbor. Right, because light deprivation curtains, essentially, plants need to sleep too. Right, so uh, both for uh, preservation of heat within, but also for the health of the plant. So a facility, unlike a greenhouse that would grow tomatoes, for example, right, this requires a complete uh, uh, blackness inside. So at night, there will be no light admitted. Uh, there might be lights in the parking lot, you know, or, or, or ground lights, okay, so that's, but that's the greenhouse- still, And that's still light that's not there right now. Um, well, I'm, I'm talking about a street light. You know, yeah, yeah, there's there there are lights. In, 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 right now, it starts. Right. So if, the, if there are security lights, then there's going to be some light impact on the neighbors. Our our goal is to have that be as minimum as possible. It's really a question for the uh, uh, you know, the light, the way the pro whatever would be required at the time, whether we need lights in the parking lots, etc. Right. But the greenhouse itself will be totally black. One moment, we'll get to you. There was one question here, and then we'll come right over to you. Yes. My question is very, I uh, like B. Um, what is, the, at this moment, what is the chance that that doesn't happen? Mm -hmm. Like, people that really don't want that here, and maybe think about to move away for reasons, allergies, I have got allergies, allergy or beliefs, uh, at this point, it would be more toward her or the mayor. What is the chance that you guys would not build that here right now, at this point? I would say that is too difficult to answer. I think starting <laughs> and operating this business every single day, I ask myself that exact same question. <laughs> you know, it, I'm sure everyone can understand how incredibly- But we need approval for that. What? As an approval process, the Commonwealth has decided that we can perform these activities. So you have the approval already Correct. the city? Yes. From a licensing no. standpoint, from not from a licensing city. standpoint, from the Commonwealth. So, so the city process, approval process is separate. And so I'll talk about that later today, but just sort of very quickly. We don't look at marijuana being yes or no. That, that's not really the question before us. The main mm -hmm. regulatory standard is, is this new use? more detrimental to the neighborhood or less detrimental than the Bill Willard operation when it was going. So that sort of would be comparing everything to the Bill Willard process when it was going. Can we just ask the Northampton, why did you choose Northampton? We chose Northampton because you all, have, no, fundamentally, you've all chosen to, uh, to be one of the leaders in the state, right? As, as Wayne mentioned earlier, once this was legal within the state, Northampton itself was overwhelmingly in favor. Um, sorry, the, the question is, how did we choose Northampton? We have a microphone here somewhere. We do not. There is no microphone provided to us. We were gracious enough that they were having us, and they did provide us a screen as well. So we were um, back to the questions, how do we choose Northampton? And uh, one of the leading reasons is that you all as voters voted overwhelmingly <coughs> for uh, the adoption of, of cannabis it and I'm, I'm, I don't think this ward voted that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got the wrong, wrong part of your answer. Uh, okay. I have a question though. Did, the, did, did your organization go through voter data and determine that Northampton was the place to go or did our government officials in some capacity reach out to you to say we are open to doing this type of facility? We did not. Uh, we did not at all communicate with government officials until we went through the process of finding property. Yes, that would be uh, that would be suitable for it. And frankly, we, we look at this uh, as as interesting because the Willard property is a problem to solve, mm -hmm. right? So we looked at it as how do we uh, how do we solve a problem and accomplish this all at the same time? But the city at no point came to us uh, whatsoever. It was based upon our own research. One moment. There was a question. Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you for your presentation. It's very informative. Um, I um, 
has a, question, a couple of questions related to the mechanics of your growing. Um, one is, um, in terms of reducing environmental impact, I'm wondering if you've given thought to growing strains that are more suited to this uh, regional environment in terms of avoiding the need to control mildew uh, and pests. Uh, but whether you've worked on selecting strains in that way. And the other thing is, um, you're saying no light at, at night, but during the batch cycle, you need to be looking at 18 hours, as I understand it. So that would mean you'd have some light control issues during that time of day. So, so let's. Good. Let's address the first. Um, the first. Is that, help? Is that helpful? Yeah. yeah. Put it in the back. Put the speaker where they need it. Oh, that's good. We can hear you. Steve Farsi, this is our this is our high tech our high tech option. Uh, this is great. Yeah. How much money you guys give in high rents? Oh, how much more high rents? Yeah, that's not even part of it. Yeah, that's not even part of it. Yeah, that's not even part of it. Now we're talking. Maybe we would have had more comfortable seating and we would be able to hear better. Mm -hmm. Hear, hear. Excuse me. We did request for that room. And when we came here tonight, this is what we got. Well, thank you, Sarah. And Wayne Biden did put in the order for the big room. And I was very disappointed that we ended up here. So in terms of your question, um, Brett is, uh, Brett's brow is available to talk about the genetics to which he um, plans in, in, on growing. That discussion, I think, could be happened afterwards. His email address will also be here. In terms of your secondary question, the light deprivation curtains will be drawn during that period so that there is no nuisance to the uh, night sky. You still have to be loud even with Can the you? microphone. Okay, thank you. Oh, that's better. Talk about it. Close your, your mouth. Talk is mouth. that better? Yes. yes. Okay. A yes, we've got a question. Why doesn't the city just buy the marijuana from East Stampton? Yeah. <laughs> That's an interesting question. There was a question That's over here. Funny, right? Yes. Yes, sir. In view of the fact that the Willard property is considerably lower than the surrounding area, how much sanitary waste is going to have to be pumped out of there to reach the, the Main line on Ryan Road, and is that uh, going to be able to handle whatever it takes place? I don't the, believe it is. I got so we're designing. We are designing this facility to be what we consider a zero waste facility in terms of the production of the plant itself. All the water is recirculated. One percent of that water cannot be reused. To which it will be driven off site, never, never contaminating um, the city of Northampton. In terms of the employees using the bathroom. If it's being driven off site, where's it going? I'm not sure. Northampton? <laughs> it's not coming to your house. <laughs> yes. Yes, question. For me here, I have to have my neighbor here. She's new to the area. And that's a reselling aspect. I've been in the area for 26 years, so maybe I'll stay, maybe I'll be able to zone and get an in-law apartment and stay and all that. So that's a concern of mine. A uh, concern also is water pressure in the Vine Road area, our area especially. And um, having the, I'm assuming you leave, like you said, the water aspect. It's coming in and, and then it's recycling, but how is it going to affect us? But that could be a way to deal aspect. That's a great question. question. Did you ever think about putting the place up on Turkey Hill in the quarry up there? So, so you want to, in, in terms of the, let me go ahead and talk about what the process will be. So they're going through, they have not applied for any permits from the city yet, and so we haven't seen the, sort of the, some of the detailed questions you're asking. The process is they will have to apply before the Zoning Board of Appeals um, for a permit to show that they're having no detrimental impacts. This is better than, than Bill Willard's are. And so a lot of the questions you're asking, I don't know the answer, but that's the kind of thing they have to prove. So what is the water, you know, how much water will they draw? Will that have any effect on fire flows or on water for the rest of you? How do they deal with sewage? I don't, I don't know the answer, but 
those are, you know, those very detailed questions are what we go through in the process. Light, noise, traffic, water, sewer, uh, except storm water, uh, wetlands. You can't persuade me that there'll be no smell. Let's go there. Okay. Let's go well, let's, <laughs> yep. Whoops. No, that starts with why build the green. Okay. I'll be having somebody come around my house with a gas mask. Catch you. Okay. Let's let's go to odor. Let's go straight to odor. Okay. It's an important question. I know you're all interested in. Uh, if you if you think about, uh, we all live in uh, in New England. We all are used to seeing very very large, as Neil pointed out, very large textile mills, right? And we hear we hear quite a bit about odor, but uh, generally, if you think about where where cannabis is being grown right now in New England, they're primarily textile mills that have been retrofitted to grow indoors uh, under light. And those facilities, when, uh, when the original mill builders envisioned it, they were never thinking 200 years forward on uh, growing cannabis in the, in the facilities. Uh, so they're naturally leaky, if you will. No matter what you try to do, uh, they're permeable, right? Um, the facility we're talking about here was designed, and, and all greenhouses that are employed in this industry are designed from the ground up to do two things. Number one, contain the, uh, the flow of air within the facility and keep out uh, air that may not be pure because the plants are highly vulnerable, <coughs> even for starters, right? The plants are highly vulnerable to any sort of infestation from anything outside. That means that every, all air that goes through this facility goes through uh, air scrubbers both on the way in and on the way out, it's critical. You'd have to follow through for me to believe you. Thank you, thank you for the opportunity. So we well, certainly, <laughs> I'll now, sit down with you anytime. Yes, and but it's, but it continues to be. Let, let, let's not go away from this question. It's an important question. Uh, Neil and I have been to uh, uh, more high-tech greenhouses than we ever would have dreamed in our lives, right? Between the Netherlands and in Ontario. We stood inside and then outside of a facility that is three million square feet of cannabis growing in Canada. And we couldn't smell a thing. I believe you, but how many have you done in Massachusetts? We're using the same... It's not just about you. Let these guys do their presentation. Well, this is the same. it's an important question, though. Let's, let's stay with it, because I think everybody here is concerned about odor. And uh, to your question, the same kind of technology that is employed there, the same kind of expertise, uh, in terms of builders uh, and in terms of how this is designed, the same people are employed uh, in this process that would be that uh, that we would draw from that same technology. So it's these are these are really advanced or expensive, you know, expensive to put up, but we don't want to smell it. You don't want to smell it. You know, period. Um, but it's but um, uh, we will. I think what we'd like to do, at, if it, if you all interest, we'd like to get your feedback. Uh, some other day, if, if we could put together a section focused completely on the individual aspects of it, so you can be uh, you can be convinced. So we could always come back and do this and just dive into that one subject. Just oh, just a moment. We've got some questions back here. Oh, just a moment. We had somebody. Yes, yes, ma'am. I'd like to know if this just requires a yes or an answer. Has anyone from your organization been part of the area out checking their practice? Yes, both of us have. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's an important. Uh, we found that in Sonoma County, we found people building both outdoors as well as uh, and outdoors. You can't stop anything, right? Outdoor growing, and we found old mill buildings also being used in the uh, in the process, and it's caught quite a bit of press as it deserves to be. Uh, What's it? Not, not using. Yeah, they're not using any of the technology that we're even uh, even close to us. The, the level of technology we're applying here is very. It, it's basically pharmaceutical grade technology. It's it's a, it's a really important point. It's that level. So anything you would find over around Boston in, in pharmaceutical plants is what we're talking about for here. Yes, sir. Can you give us the name of the uh, entities that manufacture the greenhouses for the Netherlands and Canada? Yes, we can. We'll, we'll make sure uh, we can... Dutch Greenhouses. Can you give it to us now? Yes, in the uh, in Netherlands, it's called Dutch Greenhouses. Dutch Greenhouses, Inc. is one of the biggest uh, 
biggest over there. And I'm not sure if you've ever seen the skyline in, in the Netherlands, but it, it would amaze you. You know, the, 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 because this is literally where all the food is grown for Europe, is grown in the Netherlands under greenhouses. In, uh, in Canada, thermo energy is one of the biggest. Uh, they're one of the biggest in North America that's doing this. Now, they're, they build things way larger and nothing, we will have nothing of that size here, but the technology is so far more advanced than anything in the United States today, and we're just catching up here. Yes, sir. So, so if your scrubbers are ineffective as they're initially designed, the plan is to... First plan would be to halt production. Halt production and address the intermediate... Correct. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's actually part of the overall operating procedures of the facility for the state. So it's we're held to a higher standard even. Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, um, how many acres initially do you think you'd be using for this first phase of your plan? And yes. So there's a total of 50 acres that you will have. Yes. Um, and so how is that? How what we would anticipate uh, is that the initial phase would probably be something like two, two and a half acres. Uh, at full at full capacity uh, down the road, if, if all is successful, we might get to five or six acres, and the rest will not be developed, you know, or turned so why green. Are you purchasing 50? Because that's the only way the Willards will part with it. <laughs> and there, there was a question, right? Yes, yeah, sorry. So just again about the, not to keep harping on the odors, but. Um, I lived near the landfill, and people kept saying, "Oh no, there's no odors." Or they, or the city did this great thing where they would, you call to complain about the odor, and they would send somebody out, and by the time they got there, the wind shifted. So sure, there was no odor, but they didn't put in monitoring sites to actually monitor whether there were odors. So I mean, I don't know if that would be something that you would do—is just have something that's out in the neighborhood, like in the surrounding areas, that could then monitor if, in fact, an odor. You know, rather than having to put the onus on the community right. to call and complain, but rather have something out there that would actually, dig, you know. Detect the odors. It's actually part of the uh, the overall system the way we would design it uh, right up front because the only way to detect it is to have monitoring both inside and outside for that. Uh, yes. And we you know we certainly don't want to leave the burden just on you to monitor it as this is a a solution that we're creating. Yes. As citizens, we've all kind of learned to be skeptical about technology. Facebook will protect your security, and uh, pipelines never leak. I know that this is a, your first endeavor in this field, but as you've done your research in the Netherlands and in California, etc., have you ever heard of a history of any kind of an industrial hazard generated by this type of business? We have not, uh, because again, this is uh, at, at its most fundamental level, this is growing a plant in an indoor environment, right? And it's, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be... Um, you know, uh, flippant about it, but it's we have to remember fundamentally it's it's growing plants, right? So it the level, in other words, this is not a pharmaceutical product, right? Where we're dealing with uh, many uh, hazardous chemicals, uh, so the risk associated with it is quite low. But odor, don't worry, odor is uh, it's been top of mind for us from day one. Yes, as, as Councilor Lavard certainly pointed that out. Yes. There was a question over here. Yes. Since, I'm, I'm sorry? Since Northampton is such a great place, um, have you looked at any other areas in Northampton other than green spaces or in the middle of a residential area? Uh, we looked at for a number of different properties. We couldn't find them available in this, uh, in this region. There's plenty of green space, but when you actually get down to what's available, uh, Etc. Uh, it's very hard. To, it's it's pretty hard to do. There was a question about the soil medium. We plan on using. I was just curious if it's hydroponic or soil, and I'd like to know who's going to handle your waste management. So, in terms of the medium, we plan on using a porous medium, which is considered hydroponic. Um, it's the same as a uh, a volcanic rock. Uh, that's okay, the best yeah, way that we can. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, we plan on using a hydroponic medium as we feel that that's the best way to conserve water and also recirculate it back into the plants. Waste disposal, uh, despite the amount of calls that I've 
continually gotten by vendors. We have not decided upon that yet. If you do have any suggestions, though, could we please talk afterwards? Thank you. Um, there was a question. There is a question. How here. much water is this going to? Is it coming right out of our water system? How much is well, it, it, it's an important question because we, we haven't gotten all the way through to calculating how much water will be consumed, but keep in mind that we're, we're uh, primarily testing right now well water right in the, uh, in the center of the property. So we need to work with the city to determine how much uh, would be available right out of the property. The important part about this is that, again, uh, particularly with hydroponics, as you were, as you were uh, asking, that uh, once we get water, we're bringing water into a circulation system, right? As opposed to pulling it in and then discharging it, right? So it, we, we would keep adding to the circulation system, but that's one of the reasons why we think that uh, well water is a, a good place to look to augment what we might need uh, from the city water supply as well. What happens when we have our water band? Yeah. 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 yeah, we always have a lot of September. I think we've got to rely on the well pretty hard then when that's happening. Now, is that water you're talking about, is that over the Barnes Aquifer on the Willards? Uh, it's, we're talking about the center of the Willards. Is that part of the Barnes Aquifer? I'm not sure. If you don't, would you look it up and get back yes. to me? Sure. Yes. Could you please make your contact information available so we can address that question afterwards? Thank you, sir. Brett, when would you uh, invoke the uh, the uh, the curtains? Depends on the season. I mean, we would do it so when it gets dusk comes, we shut the black curtains. So we don't have to light the curtains. So those curtains close when it the curtains gets close dark. above the lights inside, so we can still have lights on the planet, and then no light escapes. The question was, I'm not sure if you all heard it, but the question is, when would we uh, invoke the curtains? And what Brett pointed out is, as soon as dusk comes. Uh, the blackout curtains would close the uh, light to the outside of the facility. Yeah, and it would all be done automatically. So these are on timers that would automatically tie back to um, uh, tie back to it. Yes, ma'am. These are all very important questions, and I certainly can't add any more technical questions. But I am concerned to learn about the development of the parcels overall and the conservation land, the open land. I want to know about the traffic on Birds Pit Road, which is already worse. It's an insult to call it a third world road because it's so terrible. Um, so I'd like to hear, I don't know if you're going to be taking that over, but I hope we're going to get to those issues as well. I think we could, we could plan to, throughout this, we'll address uh, traffic coming from ourselves, and then I could turn it back over to Wayne to address that more, more broadly, but that, that'll be on the, uh, the list. Okay, yes, sir. We can't hear you. Can you show us the rendering that you said that you We're going to be bringing that up in a moment. Yes, we'll get to that. Okay, so. Um, I'm sorry. Okay. Now, if, I'm, I'm assuming you all would like to know more about security on the property as well? Yes. Okay, so. Uh, how about if we have uh, Clark come up and uh, address uh, security for us? If we can find Clark. He's coming in right now. There's Clark. Okay, good. Very good. Mike, no Mike? Yeah. Hey, good evening, everybody. My name is Clark Petchek. I'm a partner at DDQ's LLC. We are a security services and risk management firm. We currently provide security services to a broad array of industries, including the pharmaceutical industry, financial services and banking, and also oil and natural gas facilities. Uh, there's a little bit more about our firm and myself in the packet that was handed out this evening. Everybody on our management team is a veteran of law enforcement or special operations communities. So prior to entering the, public, the private sector, I served for eight years in the Army, all of which were in special forces. Our leadership team also includes the former commander of SEAL Team 6. Folks, we understand security. 
Where is he? Is he here? He's not here this evening. He's in Virginia. He can join us on a future occasion. As you may know, the Commonwealth has some fairly restrictive regulations regarding the security at cultivation sites. Naturally, we're going to both meet and exceed those, and we're going to work with local law enforcement to ensure that they're coordinated with throughout all phases of this development and the site security preparation. So in fact, I met with the Chief of Police earlier today, and we're going to continue to coordinate with her throughout this development process. I'm happy to take general questions this evening. Obviously, we don't have a set site plan yet, and the security is going to revolve around that set site plan, so it's in the development phase. But if you have generic questions or conceptual questions about security at the site, I'm happy to answer them this evening. Here we go. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Security for business <laughs> so we currently provide site security at a pharmaceutical manufacturing plant in the Baltimore area, and this is really comparable to a manufacturing site. Clark, we have a question over here. Yes. What's the dollar value of the inventory that you'll be uh, having at the facility, and will there be armed guards? There will not be armed guards. Neil, do you want to address the dollar value? I would say is too difficult to tell at this point. Are there um, going to be fences? Certainly, yes. So, so yes, I mean, the perimeter security we're talking about is going to include fencing around the perimeter. There's going to be uh, 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 video assessment surveillance. There's going to be intrusion detection. And then there's going to be layered security as you get closer to the facility. And you should remember, this is a cultivation site only. There's no public access to it. It's not a retail dispensary. Really, the only folks coming in and out of that property are the ones who are working at the site. So it's a gated? It will be gated. There'll be key card entry as you get further in. There'll probably be uh, fingerprint security, a retinal scan. It really, we're still in the early development phase of the security plan. Yes, you talked about fences. You're talking about fencing in the entire 50 acres? We, we won't need to do that, sir. No. For security, we'll just have to. the dirt bikers and other things? Well, that, you know, that was actually an issue that was raised by the chief of police with me this afternoon. So we're certainly going to work on making sure that nobody who shouldn't be on this site will be permitted. We'll fence a bunch of it. There won't be a necessity to fence all 50 acres, though. You're going to have cameras on there, right? We will. With the, the younger generation and technology the way it is, what if they block it? No, well, we have overlapping. You'll have overlapping visual. Is somebody going to be watching those monitors? The, the, the facility will be managed full-time, 24-7 by security. Yes, sir. I hope they're not sleeping. They won't be sleeping. They're <laughs> <laughs> drinking the water. Further questions? Yes, ma'am. Little Lee, Lockett, or Dog, are there going to be clear signage saying, do not pass this area? There will, and it will be fenced. But it's also not going to be so obtrusive. It's not Fort Knox. We want it to blend into the community, and there's no need for it to be 50-foot fences with barbed wire. It can be very muted security that's equally effective. Yes, ma'am. So two questions. One is, in one of the stuff I was reading, it mentioned something about cash being kept on the facility because you can't put cash, you can't use the money from this to put into a bank because of the federal issue. So will there be large amounts of cash stored at this site? So the question was, will there be cash on the site? No, this is a cultivation site only. So the products are being grown here. There's no cash being held at this site. And the, but my second question, just a follow-up, is the other thing I was reading about was the fact that there will be a lot of like panic buttons to get the North Hampton police there. And I guess my concern is, is that going to put extra onus, or what's going to happen with the burden on our police department if this becomes a you know public safety issue? Great question. And, and so the question was, will this create an undue hardship for the local law enforcement? And the answer is no. We're going to work closely with local law enforcement to ensure that our plan meets their needs and obviously meets the requirements of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. But the whole idea of having a full-time designated security force is to lighten the load on local law enforcement. There's a question right here. <clears throat> My neighborhood of Butts uh, entrance. My uh, my fantasy is that a couple of knuckleheads at 2 in the morning get the idea we want to get in there and get some plants. And they're going to be looking at access points to get into you, and one is right through my neighborhood. So is there a way of discouraging these knuckleheads before they get that idea? Yeah, as we noted, one of the primary features really and the goals here is deterrence, right? We want folks to know that we have security out there, 
As soon as you put video cameras up, people are very, very remiss to attempt anything because there's a record of them going on the property. So we're going to have uh, video assessment surveillance throughout the property. There'll be, there'll be signs along the fence line. Uh, it should be very clear. You're always going to have people who may attempt something, but certainly we've worked in this situation before. This is not a novelty. You are not a, a first instance where this is occurring, and we're prepared to provide the appropriate security here. Yes, ma'am. what type of security perimeter uh, control are we going to have? Obviously, we're still in the determination phase, but as I noted, it doesn't have to be Fort Knox. They don't have to be eight-foot fences. We can make them in a controlled way with technology using video assessment surveillance, intrusion detection. You don't need big lights throughout the perimeter. In fact, you need very little, and most of the sensors work in low light and low visibility. So that's not a problem. As far as deterring other children from coming onto the facility or the property, obviously, we'll have uh, fencing around there. Uh, we'll have reactionary uh, uh, guards who are going to be patrolling the perimeter as well. So if people do come on the property, they'll be identified quickly and they'll be apprehended with local law enforcement. Are those guards going to be armed? They are not going to be armed. Not with anything? Not with anything. Tasers, not no, any kind of no th there's, there's neither lethal nor non-lethal. These are, these are trained professionals, but they have phones, radios, and they know how to react, but it's it's not a question of arming them. They're certainly not going to be armed in this jurisdiction. Sir? Um, I'm, I guess I'm curious about the footprint. I guess we haven't seen the drawing yet or the rendering, but uh, in terms of the actual area, how much of that land is going to be taken up by fenced in area? So a lot of that, sir, is going to depend on the actual structure, right? We're going to build a perimeter based on the size of the structure. That's a, that's a, a pretty good rendering again. It's, it's subject to how the, the funnel design occurs. But um, we, we still have to figure out where the fencing, ultimately where the fencing would go. And, and so to be clear here, the red outline is not going to be necessarily be the fencing. Yeah, that's just a delineation. <laughs> the red is a delineation of the property, you know, the overall property itself. But this is where the greenhouse would be, uh, roughly. And, and we put it there just to give you representation. Um, with, with all the other areas uh, now vegetated and, uh, and green and, and the soil uh, stabilized. You know, Can we all step back green, and so just a slight line? We do. Oh, sorry about yeah. that. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. Ma'am. That's what it looks like. Keep this is what it looks like slides. without that. Uh, our our structure goes way down into that area. Uh, we have a lot of bears, we have coyotes. All that kind of stuff. Now, if they breach the perimeter, is that going to be sirens or what? Well, obviously, a bear is, is large enough. If it trips the intrusion detection, it'll be noticed, and we'll go out and take a look at it. But clearly, uh, when we build this, the idea is not to impact, have any environmental impact in this. If, if Nor to set off a siren. Up, we don't want to set up. We don't need a siren. Okay. No, no, no. I mean, the, there's tons of bears and, and wildlife out there. Yes. Yes. No, they, uh, again, yes. Yeah, we imagine at the outset of construction, a lot of the wildlife will probably not like the initial noise for that short period of construction. They'll probably leave the area. Um, they were there during Willard. I've been oh. here. We've been here for 40 years. Wow. They've always been there. Is that right? They're to put up with the noise and the, and the, and the pollution. Yeah, You've got a question here. Yes. Hi. Um, so we actually just bought a house directly across from the entry road, and I'm just looking now that we have the rendering up here. Um, is that road not going to be the entrance to the property anymore? Or? No, the, the road, we're anticipating that the road is still the entrance. Uh, however, we're still looking at uh, just how do we improve it uh, by putting more, uh, more trees uh, to kind of surround it. And uh, so your view, if you will, is way prettier than what you're looking at right now. And just so to follow up on that, like there's been a fence across that 
for however long, like that, that is not where the fence would be. So the question is whether or not the fencing will remain where it currently is to try to keep people off property. There will be some sort of ingress, egress fencing. We don't know the exact location. We're obviously going to work with the local neighbors to ensure that it stays muted and it's not an obtrusive presence. And let's say with that, your question one. I'm sorry. Oh, no. uh, on, on the rest of your question, though, as we work with the city on uh, on green space and access, uh, certainly the fencing might per be further in to make sure that you've got access to all the green space. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you said the owners of the property put a restriction on 50 acres? No, the, the total of uh, the, the total property is 200 acres. Right, the city would be purchasing, proposes to purchase 100 acres. And then the, uh, the next question was that the, uh, that the Willard family uh, wanted uh, the, the balance of the property sold in a couple of large parcels because it was difficult to somehow subdivide it beyond two. So we're looking at, we're, we're focused on 50 acres, which is this core gravel pit area. And the, the balance that is not here further down would be a proposed future solar development. Were there any other restrictions by the owners on your I'm sorry, I can't hear any you. Any other restrictions? Were there any other guidelines or restrictions? From Willards? From the Willards, uh, no. The, uh, the, the property, the sale of the property is being handled by a court appointed trustee rather than the Willard family directly. So there were no other restrictions placed on us other than uh, a general goal of liquidating their interest in the property without in, in no, no fewer part or no more parcels than what we're looking at now. Any other questions for Margaret Seagull? Yes. Are any other security questions? Are we all set with security? Okay. When it's ready to be disposed of, would that be the how does that security play into that, to taking it off of the property once it's developed? The, the movement of the uh, of, of material, and let me go back a couple slides on, uh, oops, wrong way. Okay, this will give you a sense of how product would move off the property. Uh, these were the big trucks you're used to having. These are uh, white individual vans. And the, the, the vans that are used are required to be unmarked and uh, have no, uh, no signage, et cetera, on them under, uh, under Massachusetts law. What would be the frequency of them in and out? Uh, they would typically move in, uh, in the uh, kind of the harvest and processing uh, period. So I would say there, there could be some of these going out every single day in small quantities, uh, but uh, I, I think it would be sporadic based upon the, uh, you know, how, how they're processed. Every single day, there could be three or two or No, one, one. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, obviously it's going to depend on the quantity that's being moved, but we really envision one or two a day, and when I say one or two, I mean one or two vehicles a day. It's not a frequent flow. You, in fact, wouldn't even notice it'll look like employees coming or leaving the site. There's going to be no impact uh, on the traffic uh, or the density area. How many employees do you expect? Let's, uh, can we address the security questions and then direct? Uh, yes. Yes. I still have one. So if you can go back. Security. To that, yeah. If you can go back to that slide with the picture of your facility. Um, so what's the buffer around that that you would need for your security? It, it really depends on line of sight. So it, so it's not it's not a <laughs> fixed amount that you can just draw a compass around the, the facility. I'm sorry. So the question was, what sort of standoff buffer would we need for the fencing? And my answer is we don't have a set ratio or a set distance. It's really going to depend on the topography. There's some rolling terrain there. You have better vantage from higher. You don't need the fences as far out. Uh, so it's really going to depend on the, the location, the exact location of the structure, and the topography around it. We'll know more as we begin to develop the process. Can you shoot a ballpark out there? Like 10 feet, 20 feet, 100 feet? No, I, I really prefer not to. You say on average, I'll take you the, the, the facility. We have a pharmaceutical manufacturing site, which is generally located in a residential area in the Maryland area. And we have it from 100 to 150 feet out. Uh, that's the fence line. But don't quote me on that. It's going to depend on this particular site and the topography here. That gives me an idea. Thank you. Are you saying that's 50 acres? 
Are you saying that the outline is 50 acres? The outline uh, of the property here is 50 acres. That's correct. That's correct. Security question in the back. The greenway, the side of the road, towards the road, there's already a big and a small bridge. Right. 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 Well, you know, well, we certainly. I, still be open to the ponds and the bubble, and the I think we're going to look at that, but that's certainly considered as the primary egress uh, and entry point. Yes. Any other security-related <coughs> questions? Yes, sir. Uh, so there have been some robberies with cultivation facilities, California, Michigan, etc. So do you know across the country what the rate per X number of armed <laughs> so, so armed robbery, very few. You had at the outset in Colorado, you had some smash and grabs early on in the process. This is years ago. And unfortunately, that's the statistical data that was available for the last few years. As you know, you have dispensaries and growth sites in the Commonwealth and there haven't been any instances of robberies. Uh, most of the, the uh, criminal occurrences that you hear about at these facilities in other states are due to inside jobs, and that's, again, part of the vetting process, and that, that puts the, uh, the importance on the vetting process when you're doing your hiring. Security? Yeah, how, how are you doing in Maryland? Was it Maryland? What, what kind of problems have you had with security in Maryland? No issues. It's again concerned neighbors who want to make sure that there's uh, there aren't unwanted visitors on the facility site. Um, security, just general consider considerations like you've raised this evening. We haven't had any issues. There have been no occurrences, and we institute a, a high tech security system there, uh, similar to what we, we propose for this site. How long has Maryland been under your security? Two and a half years. Thank you. Yes, counsel. Yes. Yes. Question, which some people did ask me about. On security, but you know, I'm right into that. Yes. Of protecting everybody. My you question, that was one of my main concerns, talking with you several times about the security part of it. Today, I received calls about who would you actually be hiring, say, locally in the city of Northampton or Ward 6? What would be their qualifications? <coughs> we have many retired veterans in this ward, a lot of them, who also served our country for a long, long time, like you. So what would you be looking for? Are police officers that are retired, which we have in Ward 6 also, and in the city? Could you explain that? Great. For all those who didn't hear, the question was about employment for the security guards. And as I mentioned to the chief of police this afternoon, our goal first and foremost is to hire local first responders. And we've done that in our facility in Maryland. We try to do that wherever we set up security shop. We don't bring in outsiders. We hire locally. We look to the local police department, the fire department, EMS. A lot of them are looking to pick up part-time shifts to supplement their income, especially here in Massachusetts. And so that would be first and foremost, those are the folks we look at. And I mentioned that to Chief Casper this afternoon. Other questions regarding security? Yes, sir. Um, so as an abutter, my primary concerns are um, light, noise, and smell. Um, the odor sounds like, you know, I believe that the technology is there. The, uh, the sound, I'm not sure how much sort of machinery or home there's going to be. But the one that I can't seem to really uh, get a handle on is light. It seems that if you're going to have 100 foot fence around the thing away from the facility, um, you're going to need to have lights on those fence and you're going to have cameras on them. You don't need lighting. So, so you have low visibility camera technology. So it operates infrared, you don't need actual lights. So it's not sort of your traditional warehouse where it's surrounded by a ring of lights. That's not the case, that's not what we envision. I'm sure that's not what you want. Exactly. Other questions regarding security? Okay, yes ma'am. I can't help but Google and everything else. Are these security cameras gonna go beyond into the neighborhood? No, man. They're intended entirely to monitor the perimeter of the property. That's it. They're, they're not intrusive of the neighbors. They're to monitor the point of egress and to monitor along the fence lines, make sure people aren't jumping the fences, cutting the fences, things like that. But it's, it's, it's not intended to monitor the neighborhood by any means. I 
the point is to have a, a sensor movement. Just I don't really need cameras because cameras are good just after to see what happened, not to prevent. Um, uh, do you have? Uh, are you uh, planning to have any sensor like the fact that says the could tell that people are, are going in because I don't believe the people watching him cameras neither, you know, people can, you know, fall asleep, it, and anything happened, you know. Yes, yes ma'am. So, so the question is whether or not we have backup or redundancies in the security or we're relying just on technology. The answer is very simply no. We combine the two. It's a layered security approach. We have full-time security personnel on the site. They're both looking at the cameras. They're also patrolling the site. And then we have technology working for us. Yes, this is a meta question. Um, it's getting late, and I'm just wondering, you've answered a lot of questions, and it's been very helpful. Thank you, I appreciate that. I'm just wondering, I, I'm concerned about hearing about the green space and the solar stuff too, so I'm wondering if we can kind of wrap this part up and move on to something else. Or we're happy. Um, we're happy to move on and let let Wayne address the uh, the green space, etc. Uh, do you think we've um, have we answered? Do you, are there more questions about this? We want to make sure, and we'll we'll move to that because I'm I'm sensitive to your point. And, and I'll note that I'm going to stick around after the meeting. So if it's a very specific question you want to pose that to me afterwards, you're welcome to. If you think this the entire group would benefit, please do raise it now, though. Yes. Hi. Um, I just want to say thank you for your time. I'm curious if you have an idea of the number of employees you expect to be taking on. Yes. Uh, uh, originally, out of the gate, we're anticipating 15 to 25. These are highly skilled technical jobs that we plan on training everyone. We do not anticipate experience. We intentionally chose Northampton because of the pool to which employees we will hire. As an operator in this industry, I think employee turnover is one of the greatest things that stops a successful operation. So after being fully operational and training these employees, we anticipate hiring over 25, and that is gonna be here done locally to ensure that we can hold on to the employees, continually train them, and continually educate them. I think it's also important to point out uh, that, back to the question of employment, the, uh, the really interesting part about this is that Massachusetts in the, uh, uh, in the Commonwealth it, throughout New England is showing a real leadership role. People that come in and join this team and start getting experience in the industry are involved in an emerging industry. Right? So uh, they can collect uh, experience, get to know the industry, et cetera, but then they can continue to grow within the industry as well and advance their careers. So these are not just jobs, these are careers. Right? So it's a really important point that we're excited about. Uh, there was an article today in uh, one of the Boston, major Boston papers, uh, posing the question, is, is Massachusetts going to be sh uh, developing a leadership position in the industry? And I think there's a good, a good potential for that to occur, and it would be great for folks to be able to start right here. Yes, sir? 6A residents, could they have preference to be employed there? I think it's certainly our preference to hire locally. Um, as this facility is in your backyard, you have the easiest access to the facility. That's been one of the, I would say, major concerns from the counselor. She has certainly made that point loud and clear, and we've heard that. Mm -hmm. Are these full-time uh, uh, Jobs, ranging from now? hourly to salary. Um, the staggered nature of some of them will be on a uh, part-time basis, but these are also full-time jobs, uh, just given the operation. Is it a 24-hour facility? Is it going to be open 24 hours with somebody working with them? Or, I mean, from a security them. standpoint, yes. How big is the operation? How big is it? How large is the operation? How many? In terms of uh, in terms of physical footprint, one of the questions was asked earlier about that facility. Uh, initially, will be about two acres. We're talking money, because you're going to bring money into the city. Yes. Taxes. Oh, I didn't understand your question. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm really, I'm really interested in the benefit to Northampton. How much money you can expect at this operation? Millions, millions. You mean 
terms of what we're building here? Or, um, I think it's too early to project out. We're, we're certainly working with the uh, we're working with the uh, the mayor currently. You must have an idea. Yeah, you yeah, you so you're putting a lot of money out. <laughs> We have a, uh, we have not applied for a tier license in the adult use market now. Um, but how about in the cultivation license? We have a medical tier. license that is not a tiered license process. There is no tier to our license in the medical program in Massachusetts. So in the growing part, you don't need to say how many separate no. counts you have? No, we do not. And you have no estimate of whether you're going to have 20,000 square feet? We do. No, we do. I, I mentioned earlier one of the questions was how big would this the facility be? And I mentioned what I mentioned is that initially it would be about two acres. So that's eight thousand square feet. Correct. But if you have multiple tiers of growing, you guys would say more than eight square feet, eight thousand square feet. Well yes, what we would anticipate over time is that phase one operation would be between eighty and one hundred thousand square feet, which is which is how we get to the two acre kind of mark. Two and two and a half acres, and we would double that as long as we were successful over time to add to the facility. But that would be about it. So your grower must have some idea because it's growing in Colorado of what eighty thousand square feet of growing space generates in terms of product revenue, and then it gets three percent of the sales. So what, what we'd rather? I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with you at all. But why don't we run the numbers since we're working currently with the city? Well, that's that's live. We can share it with you. Could I say there has been a request to move on to general questions about the development of the property? These repetitive questions can be asked. Excuse me. General questions can be asked repetitively. For me, who can only hear one side, I've pretty much heard the dimensions of this project. So I would ask, please, some of us will have to leave. Could we move to the general presentation about the development? Let's move that, please. So let me from the city's perspective in terms of the steps going on. So two separate projects going on sort of in parallel. So we have a purchase and sale agreement or back to purchase and sale agreement to buy 100 acres from Bill Willard Inc. It's basically all the land on the easterly side of this property going from uh, Route 66. Um, and sort of basically all the wooded sites. So it doesn't show up on this plan, but if you know if the gravel pit this plan ends here, it's the next hundred acres that's coming out there. So we have a purchase and sale agreement. We hope to move forward on that. Um, we are buying that land, so obviously we have to do some you know collecting money and, and grants and all that kind of thing. Um, and it's our hope to close on that early in 2019. Um, yeah. So I have a question because this uh, order from the Clean Water Act and the whole thing about what they were putting into the water, who's going to be responsible for cleaning that up, let, let alone the, any fines that would have been paid for it? Is it who, who's paying so, it? So that's what their responsibility is. Their that doesn't affect the, the wooded land that we're getting. So okay. there was, some of you know, Bill Willard, Inc. owned the gravel pit for years. Um, they bought the, the wooded land we're buying at bankruptcy auction maybe 15 years ago. The city actually put a bid in and we were unsuccessful at getting it. So that wasn't part of their core operation. Okay. Bill Willard was buying it, I assume, for expansion purposes. Um, so that 100 acres, again, is what we hope to buy. We have approval from city council to acquire up to, I think it's 120 or 125 acres, and that's part of this negotiation. So we know we want to get everything that's not the gravel pit. We hope we get all the area around the ponds and the stream, but again, we have no written agreement for that. That would be, they haven't applied for any permits yet, that would be part of the permit process is whatever offer they're willing to make, we try to, you know, protect it. Yeah, so Wayne, and also, too, Wayne and I received quite a bit of calls last year um, when the property went up for sale, I mean, up on auction, and many people wanted to help me as a counselor to save and preserve the conservation land. And believe me, we're working tirelessly to make that happen because the site is absolutely beautiful with the wildfires. And I want to thank Wayne. I want to take people from 
Woodland, from Cardinal Way, everybody helping us to try to preserve all that conservation land. So um, we're in the, looking at grants and various sources. So we, we did a uh, fundraising solicitation for donors who've contributed a lot in the past. There is a, there is a state grant um, which we'll be applying for, and there'll be CPA funds. For them. So that's for the 100 acres would not be funded by them. That'd be a separate transaction with Bill Willard. What we hope, again, is the wetlands and the ponds, that becomes donated during the permanent process. $160,000. It, it will all be in conservation. The only development would be conservation related. There is some history of abuse in that area, so we might want to restore those areas um, and certainly want to maintain trails. But the goal is conservation and things that are, you know, supporting. Yeah. So the way it looks to me is the very large pond that's there is no longer So this pond would not be part of the land we're buying directly from Bill Willard, Inc. It's part of the land which we have expressed interest in acquiring from Just Healthy, that we have city council authority to acquire, and we hope that during the permanent process they're willing to commit that to us. But no, we don't have an agreement to get that. Yeah, I think they're certainly aware of that. I, you know, I think and that is our intention, by the way. Yeah. Why doesn't the city just buy the whole thing? So a lot of reasons we didn't want it. There is a, a large liability in this property in terms of, you know, this sort of restoration has to happen, mm -hmm. dealing with the Clean Water Act issues that you asked about. There's a lot of liability here um, that we didn't want. And the other thing is we're very careful of not taking land off the tax rolls that should remain in the tax rolls. So the conservation land we think is definitely best as conservation, and that does include the ponds. We like the idea of some redevelopment here that's, that's compatible. Mm -hmm. Question here. Question here. Yeah, go around. Yeah. Um, I saw someone pointing over to the right there and saying solar may go in there, but that's the wetlands, isn't it? If you put solar so, in there, no, we lose the wetlands? There's another uh, old gravel pit that's not wetlands on the other side of the pond. So the pond sticks down. There's this the gravel driveway that goes through here, and then there's more land over there. Now, I haven't heard for sure. Um, when we put in these greenhouses and we had hydroponics, does that mix with the soil, or is that completely separate from the soil? Because that's a very fragile area, and if it gets any of that um, pesticide or any of that fertilizer, it's going to knock it out of whack. Sure, yeah, that, that's a completely contained area. You're, when you open, the question was, would we be polluting the aquifer? Uh, with hydroponics, um, no. When you walk into this facility, you're essentially walking into a building. On top of that building is where the hydroponic system will sit. Um, this is not going to permeate the aquifer, though. This is not going to pollute the obvious wildlands. And you're looking at well water, but drawing water can also have an impact. Drawing water can have an impact, and that's why we're looking at it to understand the best possible solution and working with the city to understand you know, their appetite of uh, us consuming city water. Um, and it's really going to be based on what the city would like as well as what's uh, most effective for these wetlands. Can you tell me where the ownership will be based? Ownership? I'm moving to Northampton. I have yet to sign a lease anywhere, and when I do, I, I will let you know. Are you home? <laughs> yes. Okay. That comforts me. Um, I think there should be a charter, and, and at least a third of this operation should be locally based by people who don't want to crap up their own environment. Well, that's why we came here to be good neighbors. I wanted to introduce myself. I'm moving here alone, leaving everyone I know, so I'm going to be lonely. And I'm <laughs> This is, this is a question really for Wayne, I, I ask this. So the, the part I was concerned about, I think, is the part that you're saying is the solar development behind uh, Sylvan and Lady Slipper will be done. So, so we walk our dogs back there, can we, we have act, so Sylvan and Woodland, we usually, they actually go right next to my house, everybody cuts through my yard to go to the, the pit to walk our dogs. Uh, can we make sure that we, we uh, retain access to the to the, the green area that will be. I mean, I'm so happy that you're that the town is buying 100 acres. That's great. Yeah. 
So, so the solar developer is not as far along, okay. so we can't answer that. We've met with them. We certainly made the same suggestion that, you know, what they basically said is the areas they need for their solar panels, their perimeter fence would be much tighter. It's not the 100, 150 feet, whatever it is. And anything that they don't need for their operation, they're fine to be public access. But I don't know where those boundaries are okay. yet. Um, we're certainly happy to do this sort of meeting with them if they're okay. Okay. Wayne, <coughs> I want to speak to you and to the other politicians in the room. Um, in your assessment of the impact of whatever industry grows in versus what's currently there, I know you're looking for hard facts tonight, but I want to speak to the product itself a little bit and one of the um, impact it has on youth. Um, right now we have, you know, um, an industry back there and it, it you know, big adverts and, you know, and the impact. But the idea of putting in pot plants back there normalizes that product to the youth. And you're talking about going into a residential area which impacts all of the young kids who grow up with the pot farm in the backyard. Now it's, you know, it's, it's a quarry, it's different. That's a whole different industry and it has an impact. And I don't know how you measure it, but you know, addiction is a huge problem right now and this is known to be an entryway into worse things. And it does have an impact on how the kids in our neighborhoods think about what's this in their backyard with all this security and wow, isn't that hip and groovy? And it's, you know, the 16-year-old me is surprised to hear the 55-year-old me bring this up, but I'm not sure I love, <laughs> I'm not sure I love having a pop farm in my backyard and what mm -hmm. the message it gets to my kids. That's at a higher level than, than me. <laughs> you know, again, you collectively, not maybe you personally, but you collectively in terms of residents or Hampton, voted to legalize this Maybe and some state law. Right. I know, but nonetheless, that's now what the law is in this I'm state. just saying, so factor, find a way to factor that in to your assessment of the impact yeah. on the And, and it does in some ways that may not be satisfying, it certainly shows up. So the Commonwealth is very clear, for example, in terms of signage. Um, it, I mean, not that kids aren't going to know what's growing there, but they're not allowed to sign it, they're not allowed to, to represent it in, in those sort of ways, because it's, it's not supposed to be a way to sell it for kids that pot is great in front of us. But it's a fair point, I think, you know, that's part of the process going forward. It's all kind of, our discussion, the permit process, again, is more about, it doesn't, is it more detrimental on the neighborhood? Than the old use, and so I suppose that maybe <laughs> is, is it more detrimental? And how much income comes into the town goes into substance abuse recovery treatment, and, you know, all the rest. Okay. Thank you. So I just think it's worth noting. I'm I'm sympathizing with your point, but in areas where marijuana has been legalized, addiction and opiate abuse has been known to drop significantly. I believe the numbers are dropping uh, up to 25 percent. So for an area that does have a very bad opioid epidemic, as like the, the choice word is being used, um, I think it's just worth noting that a lot of worse things could be happening than a medical marijuana place that these guys are definitely seem to be um, really concerned about keeping everybody as space limited, you know? Like they, they respect everybody, and I think that they made that point clear. And, and I respect your point, but I, I don't think that it's about being that it's, like it's about talking to your kids, you know? It starts at home. And one thing that's important, at least from my standpoint, is we want to make sure we particularly respect the abutting neighborhood. So I want to make sure we get a chance to sort of ask people all people specific questions. Yes? If it's that good, why don't they put this facility in this home and teach the children how to grow it? <laughs> and take the profit for that the end of the direction. Yeah. Yes, yes, we do. We do have a horticulture. Well, right after you have a horticulture. No, because I worked there. You can't forget, Ryan Rumble has a huge range right across the street from here, and that's something I came in agreement way before my time. They want to put a factory four minutes away from my home. My, I want access to the preservation land, and it's a what if, it's a possibility, it's a proposal, it's not a done deal. Mm -hmm. Do we look at like Village Hill and Christopher Heights is making a wonderful community there, bus routes are coming in, granted I want the bus, but they can be electric, mm -hmm. so we can get our area more to Northampton and access for the elderly in the, com in the community, because I will be an elderly resident, so mm -hmm. I'm from a point yeah. of that aspect. Right, so, so 
the question is sort of the, the what ifs, right? How much this stuff is real and how much isn't, particularly about the open space, but other things as well. So, you know, this is sort of the, this is the beginning of a process. This is a public forum. Their, their step, at least as far as the city is concerned, this part of my office is concerned, is they have to apply for a permit. And at that point, things that are, yes, we'd like to try that, or we're doing research on this, those will be worked out. So the question about how far the security perimeter will be, what's public access, what isn't public access, all those things are going to be worked out for the application. So when it goes before the board, you're no whatever it is. You, you may or may not like, like what they're proposing, but at least those things will be defended at the time. What's not going to be the process, and I hear what you say in terms of impacts in terms of, of marijuana, which the message it sends to our youth, that's not really a criteria the board will be looking at. They look at you know a series of, it, it's, it's the same thing as Bill Willard failed and a different gravel processor. It's sort of these very dry technical issues that, that we'll be looking at. The rest are, are important, not trying to negate them, but they're sort of less the issue of the board, and the board's really public access, noise, odor, traffic, all the other things which people raise. When did that thing? For 47 years, we've lived up here on Lyon Road. We raised three children here and went to this school. We have the rifle range, or whatever it's called, target shooting, which we here on Saturdays and Sundays, bang, bang, bang. We had the gravel pit with all the truck, boom, 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 down Lyon Road, and the, what they call the air brake, boom, boom, boom. We had the dump trucks. We still have some because they still pick up people's trash. But we had access to the dump out that way right on Ryan Road. And I can honestly say that we never had a problem with Bill Willard and the family-owned operation there. And I don't even know these people firsthand. I'm just saying our children were allowed to go down there and play. And we were allowed to go down there and fill buckets with sand for our children's sandbox. And now I'm going to be sending a message to my grandchildren who also come up here to play on the playground and to visit in this neighborhood and I'm sending a message saying, oh, sure, marijuana is OK, because my city voted to put this right down the street from us. I don't think that's the right message I want to send. And I respect that you say people need to talk with their children and all that. But I've had firsthand experience with alcoholism and drug abuse. And I can honestly say that I do not want to send this message to my children for all grown, thank goodness, or my grandchildren. You're missing the point of what I said, that medical marijuana actually drops those problems of like addiction and like substance abuse. And I have to that to your view. I'm not arguing with you. I'm just expressing my opinion. And I respect your opinion also. Okay, well, but that's my personal opinion. No, what about property values? I mean, am I going to be able to, accept, I mean, I, I bought knowing Bill Willard. I, I bought knowing. This is a total unknown. I have no idea if my property is going to be worth anything. I mean, you know, generally property values are affected by how well maintained properties are. So, I mean, if this operation is well maintained and everything that they're talking about, um, oops, sorry, wrong direction. Um, it should be adding to the to the area here. If it's not maintained, then obviously it's a big issue. But um, you know, yeah, I think it's the short answer is it. It's all about it's an how unknown. good a job this is. It's an unknown, and I bought knowing Willard. Well, I think that's why the permit process sort of exists, to sort of to make sure that promises that are, that are made are, are enforceable from our standpoint. Yeah. Like yeah. But, but that's a good, uh, like it's a good question about property values, because there's a study on realty.com or something like that in Colorado where within a half mile radius, uh, there was an adverse impact, about 8% eight, decline in property values. So, is there some provision in this for individuals within that radius that... Are you talking about from dispensaries or from grown facilities? Grown, grown facilities. Mm -hmm. It's called a issue. So there's a uh, <coughs> study realty.com saying that uh, there has been a decline in real estate values within a half a mile of a population. Okay, I haven't seen it. I'm curious. I'll look that up. Thank you. Other questions? I just wanted to make a yeah. comment. Uh, yesterday afternoon, uh, I saw four people walking down into Woolworths. Uh, down, they were down as far as the bridge. I don't know what they did. Yeah, I mean, you know, Woolworths is interesting. I mean, I think a lot of people love using it. They've been sort of great neighbors in terms of being. There's a fence across right. the driveway. Okay. 
Will, Willage has been great at letting people in, but we've also gotten lots of complaints what goes on out there. The reason Willage is sort of going to be on the table is because that's in essence the bar that they have to compare themselves to. So, um, yeah. Who's going to enforce the regulations? So the, the, there's a, a few different masters, if you will. So they need to get licenses from the state and they need licenses locally. Um, at the local level, um, building inspector is the one who enforces the, the zoning approvals. Board of Health presumably is involved, but it's not someone I'm involved with. At the, and at the state level, they, they have to report to a lot. So. Um, How much does our building inspector know about hypothesis? Well, he's going to know what are the standards in the permit. And part of the permit process, so the question is how much does the building inspector know about a POC facility? What he's going to know about is what are the standards in the permit. So he doesn't have to know anything about marijuana. He has to know how much light are we allowing. Right, that's, that's measurable with a light. You can buy an app for your phone that can tell you how much light. How much sound is allowed? How much? Uh, what's the odor? Um, what's the perimeter fence? What's what's being well maintained? So things that are easily measurable that the building inspector should be able to do, and that any of you should be able to do if you're worried about something. So that's the point of a permit is to make things that are are detailed and spelled out. Will they also have to get an environmental impact study done? I believe they're below the threshold, but I don't. I haven't looked. I don't. I don't know for the project. There's threads. So this is at the state level. This environmental uh, impact report, environmental education form, and there's thresholds. The biggest one of which is a matter of impervious area. So I'm not sure of the answer. You know the answer. Thank you for answering all these questions. It's obviously fundamentally important that everybody gets to ask. So thank you for your patience and your diligence. So my question is, what exactly are you selling in the end? Is this uh, is this the plan? Leaves the dry bag product. What what leaves the facility? What we're uh, we're still working on the details of that, but it is uh, we process uh, individual. Actually, let I'll let this guy answer that one. Sure. Thank you. What's going to be sold would be the process of flour that would be uh, nitrogen sealed, leaving in the vehicles. Huh? In nitrogen. <laughs> What's so, that mean? Flour. So the flour itself is uh. matured. That then is dried packaged, yeah. nitrogen sealed, and then shipped off the product in those uh, sprinter vehicles you had seen. When you said the flower, do you mean the leaf? No. So what's the difference? The, good question. <laughs> so the difference is the leaves support the growth of the flower itself. The flower is in, is in essence what the fruit of the plant is, you yeah. know, in order to continue its growth. Uh, plants attract insects um, in the same way. This is the fruit of the plant. Um, yes. People smoke the flowers, they call them buds. Yes. Okay, the lead is <laughs> Thank you, friends. <laughs> 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 what happens to all the leaves? So, what happens to the leaves? Good question. The leaves are put into a wood chipper, and then that, um, along with the 1% of wastewater, uh, will be taken off to the facility. There will not be a mound of old pot plants in your backyard. That's all regulated, by the way. That's yes, <laughs> it, this, this comes directly from the Cannabis Control Commission as well as uh, the Department of Health of Massachusetts. Yes. This is more of a comment than a question. Um, I came in not knowing much about this project at all, but I really um, appreciate the minimizing environmental impact and the use of a renewable uh, source of energy. So I just wanted to. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We appreciate that. Yeah, that's a good value. Thank you. Yes. So will you be buying your electricity from the solar farm that will go in there? <laughs> that is the intention. <laughs> and, that, and that's why we're proud of our solar power. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, I just have a question about your security. You seem to be speaking about the security of your of your facility. Um, what are the conditions in the facility that you have to Yes. I'm thinking that it might be someone other than knuckleheads, but those knuckleheads have full access to my backyard. Right. Mm -hmm. Is anybody protecting me? I have a police. I was, well, wait, let me, would you like to handle that one? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I think to the extent that you're not protected, you're preset, protected now as part of the city, that continues, but I'm not sure that if anybody is coming targeting the facility, that there's 
spinoff, part of the people we'll be reaching out to. I, I'm not a security person. So in, in the nature of our review, we'll be reaching out to different department heads with different expertise. So we'll be reaching out to the police department and asking them to do sort of a third party review. Do they have new concerns? So I don't know the answer, but I assume our police department can say, are there raised concerns that we need some additional security for or not? No, so, so we tend to share plans with the different department heads before it goes before a board. So, so the process is they apply for a permit. They haven't applied for a permit yet. So if you ask them the time schedule from my standpoint, we have no idea. So when they apply for a permit, it typically goes before a board about four to six weeks later. Um, so they apply for a permit. We review it in-house different department heads get involved, so we're asked those questions of our police department. We're asked questions for the fire department, can they access this? We're asked questions for, you know, DPW in terms of stormwater and water. So we sort of share with in-city departments, and then we'll go before a board, that's a public hearing, a butter's within 300 feet of that property will be notified, you're all welcome to come. Again, it's a more of a legal process, so the criteria they're gonna be looking at are narrower, but certainly you all get a chance to have, have your say before the board. And so that's when they evaluate those things. But the idea is to get those ahead of time, right? We, we failed if you don't know until after the fact. We're trying to anticipate those issues as much as possible. Yes? Um, since we're doing industry or greenhouse farming, hand in hand with conservation, um, with regards to the pond that we're all is there any way that this process can be contingent on uh, conservation receiving the pond from the farm? So yes and no, I guess is a short answer. Um, it, it's illegal for us to demand somebody give us property. Um, but we certainly expect someone to mitigate the adverse impacts of the project, and if they make an offer, we um, can enforce that by a permit condition. They can't change their mind. In other words. It'll be gifted. It'll be gifted. And so, you know, certainly they're, you know, they've already been expressed interest in donating it. They're certainly hearing from you all, and they've heard from the ward counselor that preserving the pond is an important part, and I certainly hope they offer that as mitigation. Presumably it makes the permit process easier than more mitigation they provide. Is, is the marijuana that you're medical marijuana, recreational marijuana, and how far is the distribution going to be? The, uh, the product that we have is, right now we have a medical license, which is, which is not to say that in the future we won't also not be producing adult use, right? Because adult use, there's, there's virtually, there is no difference between adult use and, uh, and, uh, and medical use. And if anything, in many states, what, uh, what states have found is that when adult use becomes legal, in fact, the amount of medical usage drops, right? Because there are there are many people that uh, are are really do need it for medicinal reasons, but are only getting it because of the medical uh, permit. So it makes it's almost like an over the counter kind of question at that point in time. Uh, in terms of distribution, uh, uh, certainly Northampton first and foremost. But this could be distributed throughout the Commonwealth. Uh, we're not exactly sure where, as we apply for other locations. So we don't have a specific one in mind right now, but uh, uh, I would say it's a pretty wide swap of, of uh, region around here. Yes, yes, sir. Um, medical versus adult. Um, I lived in San Bernardino when medical was all that was allowed and there was no recreational. And people were telling me, you should go back to smoking, you should go back, it's really good now. Well, everybody in San Bernardino either had a prescription medically or knew somebody who did, and everybody <laughs> smoked. When, no, I'm not against medical. When I hear that um, PTSD treatment for veterans or something should be allowed, I think that should even be subsidized. You should guys should help kick in. But when we had a medical vote here in Massachusetts, I thought of San Bernardino, and I thought, I don't want to put the onus of, of, of medical budget on people's recreational habits, and that's where it is. And there's been so much resistance, even though we voted for the recreational part, to putting that in, that we're making it easy to put the burden of people smoking recreational on the medical system. So I like hearing recreational. 
I voted against medical. I voted for recreational. I don't want to go back to smoking, but I don't want the medical association to pay for it. That makes sense. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, oh, we, we have we another have, question. Yes. I just want to throw in one design consideration. Um, in Massachusetts, because we have 521 CMR, our access board, right. um, a lot of architects get confused about employee only areas, which you intend to be, because our code doesn't cover it. So that will come under the, uh, the federal standard for accessibility, mm -hmm. and there are still accessibility guidelines. It's the most common error, I think, by architects in Massachusetts is to miss on employee on the areas. Let's make sure that uh, Jeff, Jeff Squire, our architect, is here and he's listening. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. This is a planning question. You may have already addressed this, but this area, this area is zoned residentially with a grandfather for industrial use. How does that work when is it grandfathered in forever? Is it grandfathered in if the industry is the same? Is so that, that's why it has to go before the board. If this was a new gravel processing operation, they could just do it. It goes before the zoning board, and the zoning board's charge is, is the new use more detrimental to the neighborhood, in which case they should turn it down, or is it less detrimental to the neighborhood, in which case they should approve it? And that's because of the grandfather. So, so the question is basically, the site is not zoned for marijuana growing indoors, as in if this is a virgin site and had no historic use. Because the Willard Pit is grandfathered for that kind of, you know, for some kind of use, and then it's up to the zoning board, is this one less detrimental or more detrimental? Yeah. There's going to be another public hearing next week about another industrial something up by the store. And so that means we're going to have two different things going on. I know that, you know, it's interesting how people approach this. So some people have asked, to have meetings and have planning represented, and obviously the ward councilor has asked us to be involved, and some people are just doing their own meetings without involving us. So I'm not, I, I haven't been part of that process, so I don't know. I do know, we, we, so far the only permit we've received for any marijuana use is NEDA, which is the current recreation, uh, current, um, you know, uh, medical use. Mm -hmm has asked to go to recreational, to, to adult use. No, this is... I, no, I'm saying, but we haven't received any other permits for any other uses. We know a lot of people are out there looking at a lot of uses, from edibles to oils. No, no this isn't marijuana. This is another oh, I'm sorry. industrial thing up by the store. They're going to... Behind the store. They've cut all the trees down. What are they building up here? Are we going to have another uh, business? This by Jim's right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. We I got, don't know the answer. We got a postcard from the from the city okay. saying that they're going to cut the curve and there's going to be a something. And okay. I don't know what it is. Let me give you my card. I can check tomorrow. I don't know the answer offhand, but it'll be easy enough well, to we check. We should know that in the scheme of things <laughs> of zoning. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right. Just call Wayne at his office and he'll explain it to you, Sandy. Oh, he doesn't know, but I'll I can check tomorrow morning. Right. I don't know now, but I will by tomorrow. You don't know either. Somebody got. Let him finish what he's doing right now. You're off the subject. Thank you, Sandy. I know that this is the cultivation facility, and there's talks about they're going to have a discussion about that. Um, I know that the cultivation facility is going to have a discussion about they're 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 going to have a We would not be doing it at a dispensary facility, uh, and we're still uh, we're still up in the air on whether we would do processing uh, on the property or we would move to another location. So now it's not just a greenhouse. <laughs> well, right now we're we're talking about just a greenhouse, but I think to answer your question. And so that would bring in more environmental concerns. Yeah, the plastic. Yeah. Yeah. The same number of employees. The, it would still be the same number of employees. We do not plan on using methane extraction or butane extraction. The only extraction we have looked at would be CO2 extraction, as we find it's, I think, the most uh, and safest means both for operators as well as patients. Um, but the uh, 
this would not be bringing in methane or butane into your home or into your backyard, excuse me. Yeah, that was actually something that I was going to ask as well. I mean, if there's any consideration of future refinement in the product years down the road and how that impacts the permitting now, mm -hmm. if you're suddenly considering something that's more industrial process down the road. Yeah, so one thing that makes them have to do more of their planning up front is a normal process in an industrial neighborhood. You apply for a permit and you can always come back. Because the standard is, is the new use more detrimental to the old use, that standard continues. So it's actually harder to expand the use. So it's in their best interest, not that it's not possible, but it's certainly in their interest to say, here's the biggest we might go. So they talk, for example, to the reason out here, they talk, for example, of you know maybe starting 100,000 square feet under a roof and potentially going to twice that. That's why they would plan that now, because they want to get the permits to say, here's the most we might do. I was thinking more in terms of the materials and processes that might be going on in the problem, not necessarily the footprint. Of the I, again, it's, it's the more those concerns are raised, the zoning board could say, so I know nothing about this, I just learned this term tonight. But the zoning board could say only carbon dioxide, whatever you said, and not butane, whatever you said. But, you know, they can set those sort of rules, and that's the sort of thing that's good to hear from people that you shouldn't say this. And again, I don't know the technology. After CO2 extraction, ethanol is used for the refinement. That ethanol is continually reused as, it, as it's collected, refined, and then reused in the process mostly to save money, but and also so we don't put contaminants out into the facility or, in, or into the greater surrounding area. Yes? Do you do an environmental impact survey for the initial like, greenhouse in part of your planning? Do you also do an impact assessment for if you possibly had a processing facility there as well? Again, it's in their interest to do that. Wait, wait, so the question is, if they're doing this environmental assessment or what the impacts are, do they do it just for the growing or also for any sort of processing? If they don't do it for the processing now and they later change their mind and want to add it, it's going to be a lot less likely than actually support it. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, Depends on where you are in town. Um, yes, in this case, where it's you know a previous gravel extraction event, again with the permit from the zoning board, so it's not automatic, but the zoning board has the authority to allow it. And where would it be disallowed? Um, if this is a virgin site, so a site that had never been used for this sort of use. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. We want to make sure. Yes, yes, ma'am. I want to talk either to Mary Ann or to Wayne. Um, I live on Ryan Road, approximately three houses away from the entrance to the gravel. However, I live in Ward 7 because the city, state, county decided to cut Ryan Road in half. Exactly. I was never right. notified about this meeting. One of my neighbors came and said, hey, take a look at this. So please remember when information is going out that the other side of Ryan Road, some of us do, is very close to the gravel. So for the, for the next step, when they apply for a permit, people will get notified if the assessor show you is living 300 feet of the property. So it's not the same list as here. So if your property is within 300 feet of this property, you should be notified, assuming that you're the one who gets the tax bills for your property. We also get a little, this isn't that obvious, but we do a small orange sign that's get posted on the property as well. So I think we're happy to stay and take questions. I know people are sort of filtering out. So I think I sort of make it close to the formal meeting, but feel free to come up if you have questions afterwards. Council, do you want to? Close. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all so much for coming. One, uh, we did set up board six at just help me. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so let's uh, thank you for that. Yes. Uh, just we're, we're uh, just a couple more final comments. We want to let you know that uh, we have a, uh, a series of emails if you'd like to be in touch with us. Uh, any questions you have, we set up one called board six at just 
so we've got we've got some uh, we'll make sure that the uh, your your councilman has uh, councilman has this so I will turn the microphone over to uh Council Lord. Uh in question to um, the woman that just spoke on Ryan Road. Uh, it was announced at City Council, and um, the council were on Ward 7. I met Chuck with her, and I gave her from the agenda, so that should have been forwarded to the president. So I cannot answer for that action, but we did our best we could of getting out to all the abutters on Ryan Road, and also signage being placed on the conservation areas for people to see. So, and also, if you got on to the website of City Council or NCTV, you would have heard about this meeting being held. You would have heard that we would know that.